Welcome back and good morning once again. Uh, as always, we kick off you know, the initial stages of the breakfast by sharing with you what major stories are making the headlines every morning. And it's not going to be different today. We're kicking off with the Punch newspapers on our uh, uh, today's edition of Off the Press. And uh, we'll be sharing with you as many of them as possible. The big one there says hospitals won't be able to handle serious COVID-19 cases soon. And that is from the NCDC. Federal government to extend curfew hours meets with governors. We're reviewing January 18 school resumption dates as minister. And also, government plans to release rapid test kits in Abuja next week. We can also see on the Punch newspapers, experts kick as federal government signs $1.96 billion Kano Maradi rail project memorandum of understanding. There's plots to cause religious disturbances in Lagos, Kaduna, and others. And also 1,000 NDLEA cadets are stranded as minister stops Plateau orientation. Okoro Chakamvas' new political alliance ahead of 2023 polls. And uh, what else can we find over here? Police probe 47 armed Fulani men arrested in Oyo State. And also police lied. Kidnappers collected 2 million naira to free us. That is from a couple in Ondo State. Um, Adoke tested positive, positive for COVID-19, uh, held back in the UAE, says uh, council. Uh, one or two others I can throw in. Panel summons uh, 24 families over encroachment of Ikiti Varsity land. And uh, APC chieftains and elders differ over plots against Abdul Razak's second tenure. Uh, well, we have here friends suspect drug overdose as girl dies in Yobe government lodge. These are the major ones on the uh, punch this morning and we'll just get into the conversation um, as we wait for our guests to uh, uh, join us this morning. Um, I probably will start with talking about the um, message from the DSS, you know, saying that there is a plot to cause religious uh, disturbances in Lagos, Kaduna and other states, uh, some of them in the southwest, some of them in the east. Um, and Yes, you know, we might, you should give kudos to the DSS for putting information out there. But um, one of the things that we'll be talking about today, you know, as we bring this conversation up would be, you know, so what, what then do citizens do? With the what information. Is, yeah, with that information, what, what is the DSS expecting citizens to do now? Is I think, it I think firstly, those? should they have released that information? Because I would assume this is security intelligence and you need to take proactive steps to checkmate it, right? And uh, if you find out the pulse, the feel the pulse of the people, the city on this issue, it seems that this information, really what can they do with it, isn't your job as security to make sure you you know check this because it just creates fear and panic. I don't know, yeah, what do you think about but, it but anyway? I, I don't, I'm not entirely against them putting information out there. You know, it should make people aware that they should be more careful in these uh, places, in religious, you know, um, settings and maybe in crowded spaces. So should churches be and closed down? What what not, what are people well, expected not necessarily, to act not necessarily. on that information? So so that's a question. You know, what what actions are citizens meant to take? Um, it said you know that people should be aware and also you know uh, look out for conversations or. Um, invitations into certain things like that and know that the DSS is watching and you know all of that well I really don't know what you know is expected you know people would, I've also read the comments um, of social media to, uh, with regards to the story and people are saying that in you know other climbs the you know security services in those places will um, take will get this information you would see arrests being made you see people being tracked down because they of course have been um, they have leads on them exactly yes. Uh, but here it might not be the same. You know, maybe DDSS is also working on the backgrounds and behind the scenes to ensure that they arrest certain elements that may be trying to cause these things. But um, regardless, um, everybody just needs to, I guess, be, 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 be safe and be careful. And also know that, and one of the things that is important in this conversation is the fact that, um, and it makes me sad, you know, that we still can have these type of, crisis in Nigeria in 2021. We can still have the fears of a religious crisis. We can still have fears of tribal crisis in Nigeria in 2021. So it makes me question how much we've done to unite all Nigerians. So if there is an attack on a church, it doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, coated with religious sentiments. If there's an attack on a mosque, it doesn't always have to go, you know, in that direction. It can be seen as a simple terrorist attack, and that's where we leave it. Um, but we'll find out more. We have that conversation coming up later today. 
um, um, or during the program, so we'll find out more. Another one that you know gets my attention here is the Rocha Socorita story, okay. canvassing for a new, new political, political alliance is ahead of the 2023 polls. Uh, some people might argue it's a, it's a little too early to be talking about 2023. Um, we still have a government that is in power, but yes, you know they they obviously are not going to be staying in power beyond 2023. So people can start you know aligning themselves left mm -hmm. and right to you know where they want to, um, you know how they will you know want to take over power. My own challenge and what I feel Nigerians are mostly concerned with is. Who are these people that make up these alliances? Are, are they not they... the same people, exactly. the same recycled politicians? So when you when you create a new political party, you create a new political alliance, is it with a different set of people? Is it with a different mindset? Is it with a, with a different ideology? Or it is the same person's just pouring only... Old, old wine into new into bottles. Into new bottles, you know? you know. So it's the same persons that have, con you know, continued to be, you know, ba basically plagues to you know, the Nigerian um, um, you know, to the country basically in the last couple of decades. And it's not in any way exciting here in that, you know, there's new political alliances until we see the persons who make up these alliances. And I think what's so key is just how much, you know, new political parties spring up. There are over 90 political parties that contested in the elections in 2015. And we saw INEC the registering a lot of them saying they didn't meet basic qualifications to be a political party. But I feel that the stronghold of the ruling and the opposition is just so great on the Nigerian political system that you hardly you hardly see any glimmer of hope for any new political party coming on. I can't wait to see you know young Nigerians youth take up the mantle to say we're starting up a new force and we're going to make this work. We're going to create a change and Nigerians voting in mass for them. But right now it seems the APC and the PDP is you know what we're stuck with at the moment. It's maybe because of the factors that determine um, uh, winning an election in Nigeria. Uh, the, the details that have to come into play for, you know, you to be able to win a political seat. You know, a lot of times in, you know, in other countries, maybe, you know, if it was strictly by the electoral process and because of the votes of the people and because, you know, people actually enjoyed your campaign and enjoyed the details of what you had, they would vote for you. They would sponsor your campaign. They would fund, you know, what they had to fund. But here, the amount of money that it takes, you know, for you to become governor, you to become president, you know, to run a campaign that long and to sponsor yourself through, you know, um, out a campaign and, you know, till you get to that There's place. There's so much financial so much, cost. You know, yes. and, and we, we almost, the young Nigerians very likely cannot afford that for now. And there's also little bits here and there of hitches by the um, the whole electoral process that makes it difficult. So it's still, you know, from the NSAS protest, you know, you could already see that there is a possibility of, of uniting young people. And so um, hopefully, you know, we, we can and young Nigerians can work with that energy towards the electoral process. Um, there also just needs to be, a, you know, less of the things that divide us coming into play, religion, tribe, money, and, and all of that uh, needs to, you know, be, be put aside and, and people need to come together and say, yeah, you know, this is what we want and we need to do our best to, to win a political seat, to take over, you know, a state, to take over government somehow, some way. I think one big issue here, I was listening to the radio on my way to work and this is the talk of the town. Experts kick as FG signs 1.96 billion naira, a billion dollars, Kano Maradiro project MOU. Now, the issue is the government right now has signed the MOU with, uh, it's called Mota NGO Group for the construction of that, you know, Kano Maradi st standard gauge rail. It's a run from Nigeria and Nigeria Republic. But there's so much opposition to this. Now, people are saying, It'll cost the government far less money to decongest their papa ports. It'll cost the government far less money to fix the roads in the country. But why would they be so interested in, you know, going all the way to construct a rail line between Nigeria and Nigeria? And this company is not even Nigerian. So it's not as though the Nigerian government or the Nigerian people will be benefiting from this contract, you know. It's just sad that this money is now being given to another company based in another country and to what end, really? So there is that, you know, there's that perspective. There's also the, you know, reminder that um, one of the, you know, reasons we may not have been able to um, get back money that we've borrowed, we're, we're you know, 30 trillion are in debt now about that. Uh, the reason we've not been able to in any way get back some of the money that we borrowed and we're struggling with repayment of debt and we're struggling, you know, a lot with, um, with um, you know, our budget, you know, and the amount of money we put in our budget every year to repay debt is because a lot of the projects that we've 
supposedly use these loans for have not been projects that will you know, have any benefit exactly yes. and of course be able to make more money um, you know back for the government um, if you if you are this much in debt and you cannot point out specific infrastructure industrialization mm -hmm. um, that ha you know has been of great benefit to the country at large then I don't know what we've used all that money for and why we still are taking loans and what really Nijay um, or we Nigeria, you know, stands to benefit from Nigeria in any way that will be entirely beneficial to our GDP and to the Nigerian people. So it's great questions to ask. I think I think we should move on to another paper. All right. So let's uh, look at the Nation newspaper. It says, "Can that's the Christian Association of Nigeria and Islamic Council differ over cause of COVID-19 spike?" Reopening of religious centers, businesses, schools pushed up virus positive cases, and that's according to the PTF. This one here on the front page of the nation says resumption of schools threatened, and that's according to Yun Lori and Exu. Uh, they are going online. 2023, Okorocha seeks alliance of good people in APC and PDP. Okay, we're shedding, we're seeing more light on this now. The nation is shedding that light. It's saying they're going to get good people from the APC and PDP. I really put, want to have, know the... They should it, have put LMAO at the end of that. <laughs> I really want to know what qualifies as a good person in those political parties. Anyway... Is he one of them? That's a good question. <laughs> Police arrest... 47 herdsmen with guns in or your state and suspect moved to SCID. Obiozo should work for unity. That's uh, George Obiozo, who's just been appointed as the president general of the Ohanese Indibo Social Cultural Group. Uh, this one here on the front page of the nation paper also says, Lagos or your others targets of religious violence, says DSS, clerics to be attacked. And 43 phone seekers arrested for breaching COVID-19 protocols in Lagos. That was a big story yesterday. We touched on the breakfast. And uh, I think this story here about resumption of schools threatened is, is such a big one because the fate of Nigerian students are basically in question. I can just throw back to when I was in university and how ASU Strike threatened to, you know, basically disrupt my plans. You know how I was one yeah. of those students that will write 2011 to 2015, I'm done with secondary school. 2015 to this, I'm doing this, I'm doing, and doing also, that. And also look at you. you and, <laughs> exactly. And you get depressed when you look back and say, oh, how, how far have I, how far have I gone? You know, so just imagine for the thousands and millions of Nigerian students who've planned their lives and had, you know, amazing things they wanted to do. As a strike, you know, from last year and now COVID-19 pandemic seeming to disrupt all of this. It's just very worrisome, you know. Um, well, um, you know, so I, I would say, you know, people and everybody needs to understand that the world is going through something that nobody could have predicted, you know, and for us to survive it, you know, would have to take, you know, some sacrifices. Um, maybe, you know, an extra year of your education. Maybe, you know, people would, you know, lose their jobs. Some businesses would, would fail. Um, economies would, would struggle. And those are the sacrifices that would need to be made for us to be able to um, get ourselves out of the you know, situation that we are in currently. Um, nobody knows how much longer this will last. Nobody knows how much longer it would take for vaccines to be spread across the world. It hasn't even gotten to Africa yet. And so um, schools, well, I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a sacrifice that can be made for, for students to stay at home. Shame on us that we've not been able to develop our education system enough to be able to have virtual learning and virtual you know classes shame on nigeria um, and you cannot blame covid 19 for that you cannot also um, force people back to school simply because we've not been able to put um, logistics and facilities in place over time that will uh, um, enable us to have virtual learning um, so if this is a sacrifice that needs to be made um, then it, it will have to of course just go ahead with it the factor where we're not even doing enough testing and that makes us even not sure of how much or how bad our COVID-19 reality is, um, you know, makes, you know, this is, you know, another thing that should worry us. You know, if we are very sure of what our reality is with regards to numbers and, you know, of people that are infected, then maybe it's easier for us to say, okay, maybe schools that can open or they cannot open. But since we're not sure, the numbers are still rising. Lagos still had more than 700 yesterday. Um, and it has continuously been above 1,000. We've crossed 100,000, um, I believe, already. Yes. And it is frightening. So if it is a few months 
out of school, you know, that you know, people need to sacrifice, then they, they, they should do it. But I think that sacrifice is actually too great for the Nigerian students to make when we know that there are alternatives to that, like online education. Yeah. We see the story here on the Nation newspaper. It's saying that University of Illinois is to go online. I can't wait to see a University of Benin, a University of Lagos actually fully launch online so the students can actually proceed with the education. I was you know, saying yesterday that we should start somewhere. Hmm. We may not be able to get the online education 100% and get it right, you know, okay. you, know, you know, in every way. But it's great that we start somewhere. One thing, you know, and this is one thing that I feel would hurt me, if we don't learn anything as a nation from the pandemic, as much of a disaster it has been, we as a country should learn from this and it, we should learn with regards our investment in healthcare. we should learn with regards our be, being able to adapt you know to the new normal yes. we should learn with regards you know what 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 we, in what ways we failed to develop ourselves over time um that maybe has made us struggle so much you know with with this pandemic if we leave this pandemic if at the end of this we still are not able to get to a place where our universities and offices and business places can actually work from home and people can can um work remotely then we've really not learned anything and that's mm. the thing that would really really hurt me the most um, Zoom became a, a, a big household business. name. Yes. It is a massive yes. business because of the pandemic. And that's because, of course, the app was already there. Maybe they had other ones, uh, Skype and the likes were already there in the past. But they became a massive business simply because of the pandemic. They took advantage of you know, their presence and everyone's so using Zoom. So we need to start thinking, of, thinking proactively of solutions that yes. could come in so handy it would, in times like this. It would this. be insane if after the pandemic, Nigerian universities still go back to doing the same things that they were doing prior to the pandemic. If we don't pandemic, fully adopt uh, to online It's, it's going to be completely adapt, insane. Yes. Let's move to the, I think the we Guardian can, the Guardian. newspaper. Yeah. Yes. It, it says here, why Nigerians can't produce vaccines now? Uh, seems like a very big excuse uh, to lots of people. It says, very far, we don't have the investments. It's a mirage to expect local vaccines now, says Akintayo. And uh, this one says, we're making tremendous progress. Crowds return as striking NIMC workers resume. Just how much or how, how many times do we need to be told the same thing to learn? Because remember that uh, the workers started striking in the first yes. place because they felt overwhelmed, you know, by the rush of people coming in to register because of the sh their strike and uh, the crowd has returned yet again. Commission here warns against fake app. I think maybe there's an app here <clears throat> that someone's uh, conversing as an app to register for NIN. Yeah. These things usually come with uh, people asking for, for money to register and all of that. But, uh, Nigerians have been warned against the fake app. Name SIM deadline dates draw closer. Yes, everybody keeps, keeps getting that text message, that text message every second saying go register January 19th as a deadline and all of that. Officials blame Nigerians for not exploring online process. Indeed, just what we've been talking about, everybody needing to, you know, migrate to the digital side of processes. Crowding at NIMC centers will worsen COVID-19 spread once PTF. Bandits levy Nijay communities. Uh, five million naira monthly. That is a <coughs> shocking story. I think that it's is a um, Niger. That is yes, a, a, a Niger state. A Niger state. <laughs> that is a, a monster story. Um, I saw it yesterday um, on on uh, social media, and you know I had to wait for it to make one of the major newspapers before we you know were free to comment on it. But, you know, so it's not just a rumor. Um, you remember yesterday that I also mentioned that if we don't get to a place where we're honest with ourselves about what we're dealing yes. with with regard to security, then we, we, we may never really be able to sort out our issues. If the government continues to be evasive with the truth, then we may never get to the, the root of all these issues and, and, and be able to protect Nigerians um, um, entirely. And this just um, links to the other question I was asking about the DSS, why they, need, why they need to publish that information. Are you asking people to now take laws into their own hands? Because we're seeing here that in, in Niger State, they're actually paying five million naira monthly to avoid being kidnapped. Yes. So is this what we're supposed to do now? Well, well you know, it, it basically tells you that um, for people to stay alive, they would no longer be leaning towards the Nigerian security agencies. They would rather, you know, then just pay these you know monies and you know and, and you know hope that the bandits. You, you, my my big question really is. Who are bandits? 
Good who question. who exactly <laughs> are bandits? Because it's it's a it's a name that was given to to terrorists. It's a name that was given to to killers and people who have run wild in Nigeria, kidnapping and killing and maiming people across the country. Who are bandits? If we if we look at the definition of the word bandit, you would expect that these these are people who raid and steal and 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 rob you know communities. But it doesn't seem to be a lot of robbing that is going on. It sounds a lot more like killing. So when you say bandits attack a community and kill 13 people or kill 20 people, what was stolen by these bandits? And, and you know, what really gives them, why are we calling them bandits? Why can't we just know that we are being attacked by terrorists? You know, is this a new terrorist organization? Is this the same Boko Haram? Is this ISWAP? You know, what ex what, what's going on in Nigeria? Um, and it's, it's so sad to see just how much, you know, people are taking laws into their hands. A community in Niger State have raised up to three million naira just to pay bandits to, you know, get off their backs. Wow. Well, um, I, I'm guessing, you know, this is still up for a conversation and investigation. The government may also have its own, you know, side, you know, to, you know, to this. I also have to explain to Nigerians that this maybe is not true and it's um, exaggerated. Maybe citizens really are in pain to keep themselves safe. I really have no idea. Mm. Um, but once again, if we continue to be evasive with the truth as a country and, a, you know, as a government, then we would never get, you know, to the end of this and would continue to live this lie for a long time. And the cost of living this lie, of course, is Nigerian lives and security of Nigerian lives and property. Mm. About um, three more headlines, uh, you know, on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, still talking what we discussed uh, on the front page of the nation. It says 60 Lagos Ibadan rail project workers are infected with COVID-19. And uh, court grants show a 20 million bail, 20 million naira no, bail, no. and others 1 million naira each. And you wonder how sure it is crimes are more grievous than the others who stood with him to protest. I have no idea. Um, airline to pay Nigerian $1.36 million and 50 million naira for missing luggage. Nice. <laughs> you really approve nice. of that? Yeah, you should come take mine. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. So those basically are the, right. the stories on the front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed our conversation and our quick analysis. If you have uh, thoughts that you want to quickly share with us also, um, you can send your tweets, all right? If any of these stories also caught your attention, you want to, um, you know, have your say, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa on Twitter. And uh, we, you know, we find time to, of course, squeeze that into our conversations this morning. Thanks once again. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, what happened today on the 12th of January in 1967? I'll be telling you about that on Today in History. Yes.